Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another quick flutter tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how we can use a nice heat map to display in your flutter apps. So I'll link the package below so you guys can take a closer look at it, but I can show you real quick how to implement this into your apps. So the first thing is let's copy this package and come to our code. So I've opened up a brand new Flutter project and just before we do any code, make sure to go to your pubspec.yaml and import the package. Let's save it and close the file once that's done. And just to keep everyone on the same page, in my main function, I'm running my app, which brings us this material app and I've just got a blank scaffold. So this is where we'll begin. Now in the body of the scaffold, when we create the UI, I want to return my heat map. So let's keep our code clean and create a new file to store the heat map. So I'm going to create a stateless widget called my heat map. And then in your scaffold, we can import what we just created. So we can now just cleanly do our code in this file. Now, just to get a good starting point, I'm actually just going to go to the package and they have a simple example that I'm just going to start off from. So let's copy this bit. And let's just paste it here and let's just see what the basic example looks like. So it looks like it's kind of hard to see and I think that's because my background color is too white. So let's come to our scaffold and let's just change the background color to sort of gray. Sweet, so it looks like our heat map is there and I'm just gonna center it real quick so we can see it properly. Cool, so let's come back to our heat map file. And let's have a look at some of these properties. So the first thing, which is the most important thing is our data set, right? You can see that we need to give it a map that has a date time and an integer. So for a particular date, just give it an integer and this integer will denote the strength of the color, right? So you can see these three, seven, 10, 13, etc. And these numbers are essentially the strength of this color set. So you can kind of match the colors and it looks like the one that they have by default is very colorful. But one use case I like to do is to make them all green. And instead of making the colors different, I like to just change the transparency or the opacity rather. So I'll show you what I mean. And so in the color sets, I'm just gonna copy in a green color. And by the way, if you want, you can actually click on this little square to choose whatever color you want. And so I've chose a particular green. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the opacity, which is this first number, I believe. So as we go up the strength, let's just make it more, uh, the green more visible. So I'm going to copy this and let's actually do a total of 10 levels. And just make it more and more visible green. Now you can see below the data set, we can actually specify the start date. And one useful thing for the start date is to use a date time object. And I'm just going to say date time dot now. Cool. So that just gives us today and this current week, which is November 23rd as of this recording. And you can also specify the end date. So one cool thing you can do here is just go from now and let's add a duration of however many days you want. So let's say 20 days and then it'll display that amount. Cool. And looks like we don't have any greens. So let's actually go to the data set and let's just make sure the date is the correct date. So let's make it all 2022 and the November. Cool. And you can see that the integer on the right hand side tells us about the strength of this color. So you can actually play around with this and see what other properties there are. So for example, you might find this size handy. So look, it looks like it's 20 by default. Let's see what 40 looks like. Right, so you can control the squares as well as the text color. We can change it to white or whatever you want it to look like. So probably a good idea for you to play around with it. Now, the main thing for you to know is just to give it the data set. And you can also change the color set as well. So those are probably the two important properties you have to define. Now, if you want to see this implemented in a more realistic app, I actually incorporated this heat map onto my habit tracker. So if you want, 
check out the habit tracker tutorial where the user can record their daily habits and then we can display it on a heat map. So that's how I use the heat map in my own apps. But I can imagine there's a lot of other use cases for this. So let me know if this was helpful and play around with it. And let me know if you have any questions and I'll try to help you out. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.